Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today on the first day of February to recognize Career and Technical Education Month. During this month, we highlight the impact of CTE programs. Uh, programs can be referred to as uh, Learn to Earn. Uh, these programs are for learners at all levels, as, as well as the role of CTE, CTE in supporting industries seeking to fill positions in high demand, high skill, and high wage jobs and career fields. My appreciation for CTE came at a ver very early age. Uh, my father, went, uh, coming out of the Navy, went through a CTE program, which led him to a job as a tool and die maker. Eventually, he decided to start his own business, which became quite successful. As co-chair of the Bipartisan Career and Technical Education Caucus and a senior member of the Committee on Education and Workforce, I've always supported and will continue to support CTE programs that provide learners of all ages with career-ready skills. From agriculture to the arts, from marketing to manufacturing, CTE programs develop work to develop America's most valuable resource its people. While well, one-size-fits-all approach to education is, is not an effective way to prepare students for the workforce, and we're doing students a great disservice when we only promote what is considered a traditional college experience. CTE, CTE has established itself as a path that many high-achieving students choose in pursuit of industry certification and hands-on skills that they can use right out of high school in skills-based education programs or in college. Mr. Speaker, CTE Month recognizes the benefits of a skills-based education and the valuable contributions CTE students make to the American workforce. Congress recognized the importance of CTE when we passed the Strengthening Career and Technical Education for the 21st Century Act, which helps to close the gaps, the skills gap, by modernizing the federal investment in CTE programs and connecting educators with industry stakeholders. This bill was later signed into law by President Trump in 2018. While this is a major milestone, there is still much more work to be done. That is why I will continue to put forward common sense pieces of legislation that update and promote workforce development throughout our nation. These include the, the Counseling for Career Choice Act, which ensures that high school students are made fully aware of their career and education options prior to graduation including non-degree certificate programs, internships, apprenticeships, and two-year and four-year degree programs. There is also the Skills Investment Act, which enhances tax advantage savings accounts for educational expenses so American workers can use the accounts to pay for skills-based learning, career training, and workforce development. And lastly, the Cybersecurity Skills Integration Act, which creates a $10 million pilot program within the Department of Education to award competitive grants to education employer partnerships for the development, implementation, and or expansion of post-secondary CTE programs that integrate cybersecurity education into curricula, preparing students for careers in critical infrastructure sectors. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I I'd encourage my fellow colleagues to join my co-chair, Mrs. Bonamici of Oregon, and me on the Bipartisan House Career and Technical Education Caucus as we work to restore the rungs on the, lapper, on the ladder of opportunity for all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I yield back the balance of my time.